We're continuing our study in the Westminster Larger Catechism. We have designated this section, The Doctrine of God or Theology Proper, and we're dealing with creation within the understanding of our confessional theology. Our question is number 15, and this is part two in our study of this question. Question 15, the divines ask, what is the work of creation? They answered, the work of creation is that wherein God did in the beginning, by the word of his power, make of nothing the world, and all things therein for him Self, within the space of six days, and all very good. Again, let me remind you that the source for our understanding of the why of cosmology, dealing with the universe, and our why of ontology, man and his origin, is based on a theological understanding of the Creator God which alone comes from the Word of God. It is only by means of special revelation. We do not know what Noah could learn from general revelation, the created order of things, he himself being a part of that general revelation, created in the image of God with the ability to think. One who was, as the Westminster Divines will teach us later, in his image were rational beings endued with knowledge, righteousness, and holiness. That this understanding cannot be derived, that is of creation, from the creator itself is due in part to the fact that God never intended for it to function in that way. Therefore, we have said that science as a work of man's dominion, is the work of created things for the benefit of man in subduing all things unto Christ upon the earth. Our focus, that the created order of all things that God has given to us, an order in which God intended for us to live, is the earth. Our duty is to take dominion over the earth. But rather than taking dominion over the earth, we have looked outward. We have looked into the universe. And for some reason, we want to go to dead, rocky planets that have no life and try to take dominion over them. Not a really hard thing to do, because once you get there, only thing you can do is trash the planet and leave because it doesn't have anything as a benefit for us. It's nonsense. The earth is the epitome of God's work in creation. This is the finest work God has done for us. Oh, the universe has its purpose and its meaning for us. And we can talk about that in a later explanation of creation itself. But let us not forget, this is the finest of God's work. The earth is his ornament. And he has created man to live within this realm for us to take dominion over this earth to his glory and to his honor. Thus, we noted last Lord's Day that science cannot tell you why because science does not deal with the question of why. That's why in the study of science, whether it is in the laboratory or in observation out in the field, it's never going to explain to you why something is the way that it is. All it can do is document the how, and that's what science addresses. Now, I want you to note from the answer that is given here in verse 15 by the Westminster Divines that they began, as we noted last Lord's Day, with Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we ask, what should be our understanding from the answer that is given by the divines as to the question of creation? Well, there are several. Let's take a quick look at them. 
First, what we derive from their answer in question 15. That the teaching of man's origin is derived not from an observation of the physical universe, but rather from the propositions of God's revelation to man. As we said, creation is really a theological study if you want to ask the question why as to the origin of all things created, including man. Second, we learn from Genesis 1.1 that the created world, the physical universe, did not exist prior to the beginning of said creation and that of man. The universe is clearly implied not to be eternal, unlike the God who hath created it. Third, the universe had a beginning, but God himself never had a beginning. But rather, he always was and eternally did exist. Fourth, the universe, since it did not always exist, does not exist in and of itself, but rather it is dependent upon its existence by its creator. Fifth, the universe was created out of nothing, ex nihilo. That is to say, nothing pre-existed from which God formed the universe. We're told in Hebrews 11.3, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now, I won't take time at this point to dwell upon that, but this verse is a very clear, specific teaching from Scripture. The world is framed. It is brought into existence in the form that God desired of it by His Word, literally, if you will, by His speaking it into existence, or if you really want to refine it correctly, by His his thinking it into existence so that the things that are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Clearly, there is no pre-existent matter. There is nothing that exists prior to the creation of the universe apart from the eternal God. Sixth, No man can exist apart from the Creator who created a world in which he was designed to exist. Nay, he cannot exist without being absolutely dependent upon God. Proverbs 16.4 says, The Lord has made all for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. The Lord hath created all things for himself. Seventh, that the universe was created for the purpose of God's own pleasure. Revelation 4.11 You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Eighth, this purpose of God is centered in the very context of the Son of God, who would come to redeem a people to the glory of God. In light of this understanding, we know that the central purpose of God in His creation, in time and space, must be understood in the very nature and person of the incarnate God, Jesus Christ our Lord, the God-man. All things, we're told, were created by him, for him, and through him. Listen to St. Paul, Colossians 1.16. 
For by him all things were created that are in heaven. And literally, if you will, in heaven means all things that exist or things here upon the earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. They are all created for the purpose that is to be understood and revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the true climactic event of history that God would come and take upon himself the form of man that he would redeem men unto himself for their salvation, which is unto his glory and honor. Revelation chapter 10 and verse 6. And swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. Again, in Revelation, we are being told, all things, heaven, earth, and in the seas are created by God. They exist by the power and the will of God because he thinks them so. And in Ephesians 3, 9, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Note, from the beginning of the ages, from the beginning literally of history. Everything which from the beginning of the ages it has been hidden in God who created all things through his Son. That is, that all things exist for the purpose of the Son the Son of God. That's why when we study eschatology, in light of eschatological thinking, we do not watch to see what is going on in the nation of Israel. We do not look to see what is going on in Russia. We do not look to see what is going on in the United States. We do not read our newspaper to discern the purpose and the history of the end of time. If you want to know that, you must look to the sun. What was everything created for? And why was it created? And what purpose does it have in connection to the Son of God and His mission as the God-man, the incarnate God who comes to dwell among men? That's how you understand the centrality and the single-purposeness of God from eternity past to the end and consummation of all things in this life and, as we would say it in relationship to time, eternity future. Let us dwell upon these things. Let us remember why all things exist, for whom they exist, and what is our duty in studying, understanding, and proclaiming these great truths revealed in the Word of God to us?